guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over an article titled, The Five Ways I Was Brainwashed Into Loving Toxic Men and How I un My Brain. And guys, this article is written by a gal and she's obviously 100% has issues. And she's going to go into this whole thing pretty much blaming her dad and men for the fact that why throughout her life, her adult life of choosing guys, she always goes for the wrong types of guy that treat her bad and all these things. Never once blaming herself for her choices, but always putting it on guys or her dad. And the reason I chose to do this, guys, is many, many reasons. One, one, one very important part is how there are lots of gals out there with the issues or in varying degrees. And for you guys that do dating and relationships, I'm sure at some point you either went out with some or had girlfriends that were some, or you will one day. And I'm doing this to show you how the way they think, how this impacts them, and how no matter what you do, you're not going to fix them. And this is a problem that a lot of nice guys have. They think they can save the girl. They can fix the girl, the one that has problems, the one that's gone out with all these bad boy types that treat her like crap, and they are the ones that end up getting hurt. And I don't want to see that to happen to you guys. And I'm sure there are those of you that watch this that's happened before. And it's important to understand here that through this thing which she's going to go into, and I'm going to break it down and counter a lot of things she says, you got to understand is that <clears throat> gals with daddy issues, it boils down to pretty much their dad either was an absentee father, he was never there, therefore she felt like uh, he didn't love her. So a lot of these gals chase after guys constantly because to make up for what they didn't get when they were growing up. Therefore, really, really riding the carousel. Or they chase after guys that treat them like crap because that they obviously think of themselves like crap. Or they had a dad in the picture, but he didn't tell her that he loved her enough. He didn't hug her enough, kiss her enough, do all be affectionate. Therefore, again, seeking out guys that constantly seeking out guys on the carousel to keep making up for that loss. Also, because of that, she's insecure and thinks she's not worth anything and therefore goes after the guys that treat her like crap because A, that's what she's used to because she was treated that way by her dad and B, she feels like such crap about herself, that's all she thinks she's worth. And the guys that actually treat her like a human being, like most guys would, she's actually turned off by those guys because she's thinking, ew, why would they like me? I'm garbage, so I, you know, I'm going to dump them and go for the bad boy. So I'm doing this so that to, see, to help you guys kind of understand the mindset here and to help you guys any avoid any potential pain down the road. And also, guys, I'm going to point out, you're going to see here, she goes through this, she's going to say a bunch of things that guys should do or how what women should go for in, in guys and so forth, which goes directly against what I tell you guys to do. Because if you do some of the things that she says that how guys should treat gals, it's going to treat, land you in the friend zone. And you know this. But again, I tell you, don't take advice from women about women. But anyhow, I've done enough here. I'm going to get into this. So start again, the title is Five Ways I Was Brainwashed Into Loving Toxic Men. She says, one of the most toxic men I know is, sadly, my father. He's never around. He has done many seriously wrong things to my mother and us children. He even said to my face that once that a woman's duty is to give birth. The worst thing about it all, despite being practically separated from my father, my mother still doesn't want me to think of or speak badly of him, which I believe is because she can't seem to overcome the patriarchal mindset. I can't blame her, though. Well, your mom was obviously attracted to a certain type of guy and married him, had kids thinking he'd be a, you know, a good dad, and well, he's not. And now, because of that, now this gal writing this has got the same kind of issues probably like her mom. She says, despite being practically separated from my dad, my mother still doesn't want me to think... So oh, I read that part. My bad. She says, uh, imagine what kind of messages women like my mother and me internalized growing up in a sexist society about men and relationships with men. Inevitably, these beliefs caused me to make many horrible decisions in my early 20s. Sounds about right. But again, when we're all, we're all impacted by our childhood... I'll be fair here, and our experiences growing up. But ultimately, when we're adults, the choices we make are our responsibility. Okay, at the end of the day, it boils down to the decisions we make, and we're accountable to our actions, better or worse. The problem is, nowadays, everyone wants to blame somebody else for their mistakes. And right here, she's going to blame her dad or men instead of being accountable to her actions. Uh, 
I let myself get attached to toxic men, including a man who called himself a psycho. Luckily, I came out alive, but not without serious trauma and required therapy. How did I get there? Five ways I was brainwashed into choosing and loving these men. I was brainwashed. Not my fault. Uh Uh-uh, it's my dad's fault. It's men's fault. Have some accountability for goodness sake. Number one, putting a man's love on a pedestal. I went a long time thinking I wasn't good enough for a man's love as if if it was the scarce thing that I had to fight for. I blame this on my father's absence and the media's portrayal of men in love. When you're his dream girl, he'll do anything for you. If he treats you like crap, it's just because you ain't that girl. Basically, you're the problem, and his love is the ultimate prize. Well, that's BS. Well, what'd she say right there? Her father's absence. He wasn't there, didn't give her what she needed. Therefore, she wanted uh, putting the guy's love on a pedestal. She craved it. Does this sound familiar, guys? Hence the riding of the carousel, getting as much love and validation from as many dudes as possible. She says, think like this. You don't need a man's love. A man's interest in you is not your responsibility or a testament of your self-worth. It's his choice. You're worthy of love, and love should be given freely, not chased after. Men benefit from committed relationships just as much as women. If anything, he should pursue you, not you after him. Okay. She's saying men should pursue you, chase after you, instead of you after him. What happens when guys are the ones doing all the pursuing? It turns them off. They get friend-zoned. And when I say pursue, there's there's the initial pursuing of asking a gal on a date a few times until she obviously starts chasing after him. But I'm talking about the guys always pursuing, always texting, always calling, always this, 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 and this. Pursuing through his words and actions. It turns them off. When in actuality, when the gal the guys the gals are attracted to, they're the ones doing all the chasing and pursuing. So right here, she's telling guys or gals how it should be. No, it's not gonna work out that way. Number two, number two, attributing value to traits that are really just toxic masculinity. My father puts his work before anyone else and rarely shows his emotions. I used to think this is how a man should be, and as long as he provides for the family, he's doing enough. This belief led me to date men who never had time for me and treated me like a second-class citizen. The effed up thing was, I thought it was normal. I ignored my needs to accommodate their emotional unavailability, the shitty life values. Okay, she mentioned her dad was putting his work and everything else before them. Sounds like a man on his purpose. And she said also her boyfriends did the same thing. Now she's saying obviously that that's, I don't want that. I want a guy who makes me the top priority, makes me his purpose. Well, what happens when guys make gals their purpose and and make them the number one thing? They get dumped. They get friend zoned. Exactly what I tell you not to do. You should make your purpose number one priority and gals last because for those of you guys have experienced this, you know what happens if you make them your top priority. It's unfortunate. It'd be nice that the gal you love and all that you could treat like the queen and make your priority, but when you do that, you get dumped. I'm not saying here that you need to be jerks, guys. I'm just saying is that a man's purpose should be number one priority, his ambitions, his goals. The gal's dead last because when you do what she says, what she thinks she wants, and I'm going emphasize things she wants, You get dumped, you get cheated on, you get friend zone. Nobody wants that. She says here, think this. You need a partner who is emotionally available and present. It's the minimum. It doesn't matter how desirable someone seems. If they don't add real value to you and your life, they're not the right match for you. Remember to assess your partner in relation to you and your life. You deserve to be your partner's first priority. Your partner should put you before his job or anything else. See? No. You do that, guys, you're going to get friends. And she, this is how she's feeling in the moment. This is the equivalent of the gal saying, I want the nice guy who brings me flowers, tells me how he feels, etc., etc." And when the guy does that, whoosh, see, don't take advice. Number three, <clears throat> believe in the BS that men love in, in their own way. If you ask me how I know my father actually loves me, I really can't answer because there's no factual evidence, except for my mother's endless reassurances or you can call it gaslighting, that he cared about about us so very much. The same BS later surfaced in my love life. It was told left and right and center that if a man never tells you he loves you and gives no shit about you on special occasions, it's okay because his love language is probably physical touch. Come on. 
To my father and these men, I say this plain and simple. If you really love it in that way, your own damn way, it's not enough. Do better. So, she wants a guy to always tell about how he feels and all that stuff like that. Well, what happens when a guy is constantly telling her all the time how he loves her and this, this, and this? This gives her certainty. And certainty, women hate uncertainty. Let me make this clear. They hate uncertainty. However, they're attracted to uncertainty. The, guy, the nice guy that's always showing her through his words and actions that he's there for her no matter what, that he loves her, he cares about her, on and on and on, that gives her certainty and makes her feel too comfortable. And how does she treat that guy? Compared to how she treats the guy who she's always chasing for his validation, always wondering where she stands with him, always wanting to know if he really likes her or loves her, all these things. Again, this is screwed up. Don't get me wrong, guys, but it is what it is. So this is why you constantly letting her know all the time that you're always there for her no matter what, that you love her so much, this, this, and this, makes her get too comfortable and then loses interest and chases after the guy that doesn't do this. It's screwed up, but it is what it is. Now she says, think this, you deserve to be loved in a way and you can understand and appreciate. There are plenty of people out there. Don't settle for the one that makes the beautiful and simple thing called love feel like rocket science. If someone, if someone love, if someone's love feels really hard to recognize, it's not enough. Now, in a perfect world, these would all be fine. I, and you know, that you shouldn't have to chase after someone and all this other crap like that she's talking about. It'd be nice to know how the other person feels, or, or for her case, for women, how the dude feels. But when he does it all the time, you see what happens. <clears throat> and how many of you guys watching this have done the things that she's saying here she wants guys to do, and then you got dumped. Dumped by for some guy that, in your view, is a piece of crap. We've all been there. It's happened to me. <clears throat> Number four, looking at myself through the male gaze. From adolescence to my early 20s, I found myself acting and dressing not for myself, but for male attention. I wanted to lose weight and to have a body that would, that would be uh, S-word attractive to a man. I was constantly seeking their validation without knowing why. Well, I'll tell you why. Because validation, I heard this once and it's brilliant. Attention and validation to a gal is they crave it the way a plant needs water and sunlight. They can't function without it. So they're cons they and that's why they chase after the guys. They want that validation, validation. And once the guys give it to them, it gets boring, and they go to find validation from other places. Hence, look at nowadays with the easy access of attention and validation from social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, OnlyFans. If you go that far, OnlyFans the ultimate validation when the guy actually pays to see pictures of you and all that. See what I mean? And this isn't just young gals in their teens and 20s. This is women in their 30s, 40s, 50s. No joke. It doesn't stop. <clears throat> but it wasn't just my appearance. I tried to morph myself into the infamous cool girl or dream girl, which caused me to objectify myself and obsess about what others thought of me. I ended up constantly feeling insecure and anxious like a shell of myself. It was like my life was a stage and the audience was all male. Now, here's the part where she's going to go into the whole thing that male attention isn't the prize and you're the prize and blah, blah, blah. She says, think this. Male attention isn't a prize. It has no real value. Sure. You've only spent your entire life chasing after male attention to make up for how you didn't get it from your dad and all that. You think you're going to just switch it off like that? It's not going to happen. And there's the initial thing that all gals do to crave the attention from dudes. Uh, ask yourself, am I doing this for me or for anyone? Live your life on your terms. If a man gives you unsolicited comments on your hair, your outfit, or your body, make it clear to him that's, that, that nobody asks him. Your opinions of you should matter to you the most. Well, again, yeah, that'd be nice, but that's not really how it works. It is what it is. Uh, number five, looking at relationships with men as the default. In the past, I let men who are emotionally stunted shame me for my emotional nature. I then tried to be cool and chill because I thought that's what men prefer. The outcome, my needs were never met, and I developed severe dating anxiety. Those men also didn't respect me because apparently I had no preferences of my own and couldn't stand up for myself. I felt like a stranger in my own relationship and was left wondering what went wrong. Well, at the end of the day, it boils down to us. 
It boils down to our own choices that we make as adults because we should be accountable for actions as adults. But again, through this whole article, you can see, well, the impact that the daddy issues had on her. And you guys can be aware of what you may be getting into if you if you sense your gal's daddy issues. But she's saying all this, but good luck making implementing it in real life. She says, think this. Your relationship is yours. It should work for you. Acknowledge and honor your feelings and needs. They're all valid. Your needs are important. If a man can't meet your needs, it's not a sign to change yourself to fit in his version of a relationship. It's time to cut your losses. Do not try to prove that a man that you're the right woman for him. Assess him over time whether he's the right man for you. And she wrote you in giant letters. Again, all, all honestly good advice, but again... Is this actually going to happen? Is, is is she a gal with daddy issues and has blamed the dad for her actions and poor choices with men? and uh, Or other women like her, are they actually going to do this? I think not. I think she's just venting and hoping to make herself feel better here. It says, it took me a long time to wake myself up, but I'm glad my eyes are open. I'm, not, I'm really happy to see more women getting educated and financially independent so they don't have to depend on a man, literally, for their livelihood and can make choices that benefit them. Though I know there are still many women who are stuck in shitty relationships with bad men and mediocre men who add little value to their life, getting scammed for their emotional labor and think it is how things should be. It is not. As a woman, you're powerful and you deserve a life that brings you peace and happiness, so keep working on yourself and spreading the word. Well, I... Everybody deserves a life of peace and happiness. I agree there. And everybody should work on themselves and so forth. But she can say this till she's blue in the face. It doesn't mean she's probably going to change herself or gals just like her. So I'm doing this, guys, just to show you the mindset. I'm showing you how put the blame on dad and blaming the, blaming the dudes. But at the end of the day, you saw through this whole thing, guys. All these things she's saying that uh, women should do and, and, and how a guy should treat them. But in reality, when the guys do these things, like I said, she says... They get dumped. So, does that mean I'm saying you ought to go out there and treat all gals like crap? I'm not saying that, okay? What I am saying is if you do exactly what she says and does all this nice guy stuff, it's going to come back to bite you in the butt. It doesn't make you a bad guy if you make your priority, your purpose, first and the gal last. A lot of women would disagree with that, but then again, whose advice would I take? Women in general who don't know what they want or someone like me who's been around the block? And many of you guys have been around the block yourselves and learned the hard way. So a lot of things she talks about and tells you what to do, I would not take, follow that advice. But this article is a perfect example of how all women have insecurities. Even, in fact, the hottest ones have the most insecurities. So be aware of this. So for you guys that, again, are puzzled or have been puzzled, you treat a girl like a human being and she dumps you for guys to treat them like crap. Why do they do that? It's because most of them are insecure. They don't like themselves in varying degrees. And therefore, a guy that actually treats them well, like actually a human being, not, not really super well, but just like a human being, they get dumped. This is why. This is why you can't put them on a pedestal. You can't chase after them. You can't make them your purpose, you know, and then you find the balance there. It is what it is. But I thought there was a good one here to read to show you the blame game to show you what's going on there and a perfect example why you don't do what they tell you to do or what they say they want. Not going to work out well. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. Let me know, guys, if you had experiences in this dating girls that obviously have either serious insecurities or daddy issues. Let me, let me know about your experiences. Let me know your experiences about taking advice from gals and then you doing it and then blowing up in your face. I like to hear that because these are important things to talk about. This isn't the relationship channel, but I do give, I've been around the block. I've been playing relationships. I give information because a big chunk of you guys do relationships. Let's, let's be honest here. So if I can throw pieces of wisdom out there to help you guys out, help your situation, I want to do that. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.